Hey, yogis. Today, we're going to do a practice for the hips, including both opening and strengthening work. And you'll just need a blanket. And if you don't have a mat and you want to just do this on carpet or on a blanket, you can do that. Otherwise, I have put my sticky mat down with a blanket over top of it. And to begin, come to lie on your blanket. So the first thing to do is just to make yourself comfortable. And that doesn't necessarily mean having the legs extended. You may be more comfortable with your knees bent. And we'll take both hands to the place where your low ribs become your belly. And I'd like you just to breathe into the space of your hands to begin. So inviting your breath to pull down through the lungs and fill like the base of the lungs. You may get a little feedback as your belly rises and falls. You want to invite your breath to be both expansive and soft. Check into any holding your tension that may be occurring in your teeth, tongue, jaw. A simple way to reduce that tension is to drop your tongue from the pinned to the roof of the mouth to release and soft down in the base of the mouth. Make sure your teeth aren't clenching, they're, they're slightly parted. Those two actions are going to just widen and release the jaw, the throat, maybe the skin on your whole scalp. Last couple breaths. And then bring your hands to the front of your hips, right at your hip points. You can just let your palms rest there. And we're going to do an asymmetrical movement for the pelvis. I, I call it up slip, down slip. I don't know if that's technical or not, but you're gonna pull the right half of your pelvis up towards your face and the left half of your pelvis down towards your left foot. So the pelvis moves in two different directions here. Hold that, feel any sensations that creates. And then shift the other way. Slide the left hip up, pull your right hip down. Up slip on the left half, down slip on the right. And then we'll just go side to side a couple of times. So you can feel the pelvis sliding and gliding on your blanket, so on the back half. And probably also you get some feedback with your hands on the front of the pelvis. Just a simple loosening technique. And also it can be quite informative as to the ability for the two halves of the pelvis to move independently or informative to whether there's any stickiness or stuckness on one side or both, always a possibility. Okay, release that. Bend your knees. Take your feet wider than your hips. You can keep your hands on your hips. And then tip your right knee away from you, away from your face. Let your right hip lift up and come onto the inner edge of your right foot. Your left knee stays as it is, pointing up toward the ceiling. And then change. Shift the right pelvis back down. Reach your left knee away from you. Let your left hip lift up, come onto the inner left foot, and stretch, reach your left top of the thigh, knee long away from you. Okay, then let's just do that side to side a few times. 
So lengthening through the hip flexors. Again, we have that sort of asymmetrical two halves of the pelvis doing two different things. How well do things move around in there? After the next time you have gone to the left, you're even on the two sides. Just pause back in the center. Let your pelvis drop down evenly. Rest your hands where your low ribs become your belly and breathe. And then interlace your hands behind your head. Cradle your head in your hands. Keep your left knee bent. Stretch your right leg along. And then lift your right leg up, oh, 10 to 12 inches, and hover it above your blanket. For starters, your right toes point straight up in the air. Feel the muscularization of your hip flexors, your quad, on the right, and then rotate your right toes all the way to the right by spinning your hip in the socket. This is an external rotation, so spin your hip to the right. Notice how the muscularization of your leg changes. Turn your right toes to point straight ahead, or up, rather, and then rotate your toes to the left. So we internally rotate that leg, which is a much more challenging action, much more unnatural action. All right, let's do that a couple of times each way. So bring your toes to point straight up, rotate toes to the right. Of course, that rotation isn't in the toes, it's in the hips. So rotating the right hip externally, then back to neutral, and then internally your toes, your whole leg will spin to the left. One more time. Turn your toes to the right. Hold. Back to the center. And then to the left. Hold. Back to the center. And then we lower down. Take 10 seconds. Control your descent really slowly. Releasing your leg eventually all the way to the floor. Once you get heel down, touch down, then just release. Soften your whole right leg and hip. Breathe fully. Let's change. Bend your right knee. Stretch your left leg long. And lift your left leg up. Hover it 10 or 12 inches above your mat. Now we just hold right in the center. Toes point straight up. And then rotate your left leg to the left. Again, this is an external rotation. Hold. Sense how that rotational component changed in your musculature and then shift back to the center and then internally rotate your left leg by spinning your leg to the right. Okay, then we do that a couple times shifting, rotating and holding. Don't be in a rush. If one particular aspect of the movement feels more therapeutic to you than the other, you could always stay extra time there.
next time you have completed external and internal rotation, point your toes back up to the ceiling and then slowly, slowly lower your left leg down. Don't be in a rush. Take 10 seconds. Control your descent. When you get all the way down, then once again, relax, release fully through your left hip, left side of your pelvis. and then bend your left knee. Release your hands from behind your head. Cross your right ankle over your left knee and flex your right toes. And then draw your knees into your chest. You're gonna slide your right hand between your legs and interlace your hands either behind your left thigh or to the top of your left shin. Now, if your legs are really far away from you, you could grab a strap or like a necktie or a long sock to lengthen your arms and that could go around your shin. Okay, so we keep that action in the right foot. Push through your heels, spread your toes. Try to drop your shoulders down and your head down and then use your arms, bend your elbows, pull with your hands and bring your right shin closer to you. Find your breath. Can you breathe into the same spot that we were at the beginning? So low ribs, upper belly, diaphragm area. Keep the interlacing of your fingers. Keep your legs as they are. Just roll your weight a little bit to your left outer pelvis and shift your legs, oh, like one or two inches to the left. So it doesn't take much movement for me to get more feedback in my right outer hip. You might be able to shift a little bit more. At this point, I'm letting my right hip lift a little bit and putting more weight into the left, like low back, outer hip area. Okay, let's return to the center. Uncross your legs, feet on the floor, pause, breathe. Second side, cross the left ankle over the right knee, flex your left toes, and draw your knees in. This time, left hand slides between your legs. Interlace your hands to the back of the right thigh or the front of the right shin. If you need to lengthen your arms, of course, you do that. And then try to drop your shoulders down, head down. Keep your left foot active and Pull with your arms to draw your left shin in. Make sure that your teeth are not clamped. Your tongue is soft and loose. Use your breath to help deepen your shape. So good rule of thumb is that you deepen on exhales. So as you exhale, you might nudge your left shin a touch closer to you. Let's shift a little bit to the right. So roll some weight to the right half of the pelvis. Slide your legs a teeny bit to the right, one inch, two inches. Let's go again more to the right, if you have the capacity. Uh, 
last breath or two. And then come back to the center, undo your legs, release your hands, slide your legs out long. Bring your hands to your low ribs, upper belly, and breathe. Let the fronts of your hips soften and relax. Bend the knees. Bring your arm overhead as you roll to the side. Rest your head in your arm. And then you try to keep your head and neck soft. Use your top hand to press yourself up. Let's come all the way up to standing. So when you stand, you want to be intentional with your feet. Take a look at your toes. All 10 of your toes should point straight ahead. So your outer feet are parallel to one another. This might feel slightly odd at first because the tendency is for the people to stand with the toes turning out. So this might feel a little bit like they're turning in. Take your hands onto your hips. Shift your weight over into your left leg. Squeeze your right outer hip and just float your right leg up. Now I want you to engage the outer hip more and lift the right leg higher. It's really not that comfortable. Then rotate your right toes straight up toward the ceiling. So there's that external rotation again. Rotate your toes back to face forward and then place your right foot down. Let's try the other side. Shift weight over into your right leg. Make your standing leg strong and sweep your left leg up. So left toes point straight ahead to start. Now squeeze more through the left outer hip. Lift your left leg higher. This is a toning action for the gluteus medius, which is basically your outer hip and outer low back area. I'm not a great balancer. Turn your left toes up by rotating your hip in the socket. Rotate your left toes to point straight ahead and then place your left foot down. Release your arms, stand up tall. Feel your feet making contact as you lift and lengthen through the crown of your head. Let's do that again a little quicker and then we'll add on. Hands to your hips, shift weight into your left leg. Float your right leg up, lift your right leg higher, spin your toes up toward the ceiling, then keeping the external rotation of your right leg, you're going to bend your knee and sweep your right ankle over your left knee. Now we've been here once before on our backs. We'll do it balancing. Take your hands together, bend your left knee, and start to sit your left side down. I call this standing figure four. Cast your gaze out in front of you. Lift through your chest. Breathe easy. Press into your left foot, come to stand, and set your right foot down. Let's try that again on the second side. Last standing balancing. Shift weight into your right leg, hands to your hips, sweep your left leg up, lift it higher, turn your left toes open, bend your left knee, sweep your left ankle to your right knee, bring your hands to prayer, and start to bend your right knee and sit low, or in my case, hang on for dear life. Lift through the chest, flex your left toes.
Try not to clench your teeth. And then we come up, set your left foot down. Pause, stand tall. Tadasana, the mountain pose. Feel your feet, feel your legs and your pelvis, and feel the upward lift of your spine. Let's take the fingertips together, bend your knees and step, step your feet out really wide and take your arms out really wide. So you wanna go so wide that your wrists and your ankles line up. Take your hands to your hips. Turn your right toes all the way to the right and your left toes halfway to the right. And then bend your right knee. So here's that external rotation of the knee again. Make a fist with your right hand. Take your fist inside your right knee. Try to push your right knee to the right but resist. So create tone in your inner right thigh. Keep that tone. Take your fist to your outer right knee. Try to push your knee to the left. Don't let it go anywhere. Tone your outer right hip. Keep tone both in the inner leg and the outer leg. Stretch your arms out long. Soft eyes, soft tongue. Strong back leg. Take your hands to your hips. Straighten your right leg. Change to the other side. Turn your left toes out. Turn your right toes in. And bend your left knee. Make your fist with your left hand. Take your fist to your inner left knee. Push your knee to the left, but don't let it go anywhere. Resist. You create inner left thigh engagement. Keep that in tone. Take your fist to your outer left knee. Try to push your knee to the right. Don't let it go anywhere. Tone your outer hip. All right, keep both of those engagements. Stretch your arms out. Firm your back leg. Breathe. Straighten your left leg. Turn your 10 toes straight ahead, heel toe in a little bit, and step, step your feet together. All 10 toes point straight ahead. Stand up nice and tall, Tadasana. All right, let's come to sit. So take a seat with your legs out in front of you. Grab a hold of your inner knees with your hands, pull your knees wide and take the soles of your feet together. This is the Baddha Konasana or the bound angle pose, often called the butterfly pose. Take your hands out to your sides or behind you, depending on your flexibility, but stay up on your fingertips. so You can push down with your fingertips, lift up through your chest. Try not to lean back, lift up, and soften your inner legs. Then we want to keep as much lift through the chest as we can. Walk your hands out in front of you, hinge at your hips and fold forward. Press your heels together, spread your toes, and walk your hands any amount out. as you fold towards your feet. Last two breaths. Walk your hands back, lift your torso up. Draw your knees together, wrap your arms around your shins, hug in. From here, we take the left leg forward in a 90 degree angle. So your left shin is parallel to like the side of your mat or the side of your blanket. 
And then your right shin is going to do the same action in front of your left shin. If this action is too intense, so you can see my knees are like in line with my hips, you can widen the angle so that it's less intense. And do that especially if your knees are like way up in the air. If it's not intense at all and you feel like you want more intensity, then you can actually stack your shins on top of each other. But notice I still have that 90 degrees in the legs. Take your fingertips by your side, sit up nice and tall. Lead with your chest, keep your spine long, walk your hands out in front of you and fold towards your legs. So remember, it's not schlumpy. You're not rounding in. You're trying to keep elongation in the front of the spine. Make sure you're not gritting your teeth or clamping down on your eyeballs. Stay soft. Last couple of breaths. Walk your hands back. You can manually assist, slide your legs out long. Press through your heels, fingertips by your side, sit up nice and tall. Let's do the other side. So first the right leg comes into 90 degrees and then the left leg, left shin either comes in front of the right shin, wide of the right shin or on top. Go for 90 degrees in both knees. I have some action in the feet. Press down into your hands, lift up through your spine, elongate, inhale. Exhale, hinge at the hips, lead with your chest and fold. the whole complex of your mouth, jaw, throat, open and easy. Breathe with your diaphragm. So nice low breath into the low lung, upper belly. As your legs, hips, back release, you may find you've got more room to, to walk your hands out a little further. So feel free to deepen as space becomes available. Last couple of breaths. Walk your hands back, lift your torso up one more time. Manually assist your legs, slide your legs out long. Last action here, use your hands to help spread your legs wide. If you're really tight in your inner legs, you may find that just hands by your side sitting up tall is plenty of intensity. Or you may be able to walk your hands out in front of you and one last time leading with your chest fold forward. Check out my toes, they're pointing straight up in the air. So that requires a fair amount of muscularization so that they don't flop in or flop out. And luckily we've prepared the hips to be able to keep the toes pointing straight up. And again, don't be in a rush, but if space becomes available to you through your exhale breath, you can deepen your shape. Walk yourself up. Use your hands to help draw your legs in. Wrap your arms around your shins. And then come to lie on your back. Have your knees bent. Bring your heels in quite close to you. 
palms down by your side. Push down into your hands and your heels and lift your hips up. Tuck your shoulders a little bit underneath you. Firm your buns, lift your hips some more. This is a counter pose to all of our deep hip flexion. So we're trying to open up the fronts of the hips. Also helps to engage the glutes and the hamstrings after all of the opening work that we did. Let's take several more breaths here. And then lower your hips down. Slide your legs out long. Turn your palms to face up. And we close with a rest. If you can stay here for three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, that's ideal. I'm going to end with you now. But thank you so much for practice. And namaste.